CBS Sports presents the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show, sponsored by Pizza Hut, who reminds you that any time's a great time to stop and smell the pizza. And hi, everybody. Jim Nance in New York, along with Bill Raftery, Billy Packer, my favorite 30 minutes ahead. And hold your breath. Let's get out to Kansas City. James Brown, get it underway, please. All right, Jimmy, thank you very much, and my favorite 30 minutes as well. And we are set to reveal the 64-team field for this year's tournament. Let's get right to it by revealing the one seeds in the four regions. And, folks, take a look. The one seed in the east, North Carolina, Purdue has played itself into a one seed in the southeast. It's Missouri, the one seed in the west, and in the Midwest, Arkansas. All right, let's move in the east and give you these games, which will be played on Thursday, Saturday in Uniondale, New York. The sixth seed is Nebraska, Danny Neal team and his staff congratulations fourth consecutive appearance they won the big eight tournament the pennsylvania quakers will be the team they will go up against 29 straight ivy league victories the florida gators coached by long kruger first appearance since 1989 they will take on lefty drizelle and the james madison dukes third different team that lefty has taken to the ncaa tournament gene bartow's alabama birmingham team the seventh seed great season for bartow congratulations to them they will take on mike jarvis and the george washington Washington Colonials, winners of eight of the last ten games. Jim Calhoun's Connecticut Huskies, the two-seed. Big East regular season champions led by National Player of the Year candidate Donyar Marshall will take on Ryder. Now, it is number one North Carolina as we look at the Friday-Sunday games in Landover, Maryland. Carolina, the number one seed, will take on the divinely inspired Liberty Flames. Eighth seed, Washington State, coached by Kelvin Sampson. First appearance since George Raveling took the Cougars to the tournament. That in 83, taking on Boston College. First appearance since Gary Williams did the trick back in 85. The fifth seed, Indiana, slumped down the stretch of the season, lost three of the last five, but they will take on Ohio University, led by big-time player Gary Trent and a squad that also beat Connecticut by nine points late in December. John Cheney's team suffocating defensively. The Temple Owls, a record of 22 and 7, will play the Drexel Dragons, a record of 25 and 4, out of the North Atlantic Conference. All right. Now, these are Thursday, Saturday games in Lexington, Kentucky, in the Southeast. It is Purdue, as we mentioned. Gene Cady has a guy by the name of the big dog, Glenn Robinson, who will take on Central Florida, the Golden Knights. First tournament bid for the Golden Knights. All right, the eighth seed, Providence Friars. Rick Barnes, congratulations. Coming off its first ever Big East Tournament Championship, will play the Alabama Crimson Tide. The Demon Deacons of Wake Forest are in. Dave Odom's club beat Duke twice and North Carolina once and will play College of Charleston. All right, the fourth seed, the Kansas Jayhawks. Roy Williams' fifth consecutive appearance for last year's Final Four team, playing Tennessee Chattanooga, the Moccasins' second consecutive appearance for the champions of the Southern Conference. All right, in St. Petersburg, Florida, these will be Friday, Sunday games. The sixth seed, the Marquette Warriors. Congratulations to Kevin O'Neill. Marty Fletcher out of DeMatha High School coaching southwestern Louisiana. That is the 11th seed there. Next up, third seed at Kentucky. The Wildcats, an NCAA record 35th overall appearance, will host Tennessee State. Frankie Allen's team, nice job down in the Ohio Valley Conference. The seventh seed, Michigan State, coached by Judd Heathcote, will play P.J. Carlissimo's Seton Hall Pirates. A big performance this weekend in the Big East catapulted them into the big dance. Mike Krzyzewski's Duke Blue Devils, 11th consecutive appearance for the two-time national champions, and they will play the winner of the SWAC championship, that game tonight between Texas Southern and Jackson State. All right, and that is half the field. We will come back with the remaining 32. We'll do that after this message and a word from your local station. These will be Thursday, Saturday games in Ogden, Utah. The number one seed, Missouri, not hurt at all by that loss in the Big 8 tournament. The Missouri will host Navy's midshipmen coached by Don DeVoe, the Patriot League champions. All right, Cincinnati is the eighth seed. Bob Huggins' team, tenacious defense, of course, their trademark. Third consecutive appearance. They will take on Wisconsin. Stu Jackson, 
coaching his team into the NCAA first appearance since 1947. The fifth seed is California, the Golden Bears. Got to the Sweet 16 last year. Coach Todd Bozeman hoping to go further. They will play Wisconsin Green Bay, a 26-6 record as champions of the Mid-Continent Conference. The fourth seed, Syracuse, Jim Beheim, masterful coaching job as the Orangemen will take on Hawaii. First bid since 1972 for the champions of the WAC. All right, now we move to Friday, Sunday games in Sacramento, California in the West. The sixth seed, Minnesota, just a third appearance in the last 12 years for Minnesota. They will play Southern Illinois, the Salukis, second consecutive bid for the champions of the Missouri Valley. Denny Crum's Louisville Cardinals, the third seed, may be the best starting five in college basketball. Will play host to Boise State, the Broncos coached by Bobby Dye. All right, the seventh seed, Virginia Cavaliers. Jeff Jones, nice job, big performance this weekend by his squad. Good momentum heading into the tournament. Will play New Mexico, the Lobos, coached by Dave Bliss. The number two seed, Arizona, coached by Lute Olson, of course, might have the best backcourt in the nation. They will play Loyola of Maryland. All right, now we move to Wichita, Kansas, and these will be Thursday, Saturday games in the Midwest. The sixth seed, Tom Pender's Texas Longhorns, fifth appearance in the last six years for Texas, will play Western Kentucky, second consecutive appearance there. The third seed, Michigan, coached by Steve Fisher, looking to improve on his already stellar 17-3 NCAA record, will play Pepperdine. The number seven seed, St. Louis, will take on Maryland. Gary Williams' remarkable job of rebuilding that program with the Terrapins. The Terrapins, the 10th seed. All right, the number two seed, yes, it is UMass. The number two seed there, John Calipari squad won their third consecutive Atlantic 10 title and will play Southwest Texas State, first appearance in the big dance for them. All right, now we move to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Friday, Sunday games. The number one seed, Arkansas, seventh consecutive appearance for Nolan Richardson and the Razorbacks will play the MEAC champ. That game will be between North Carolina A&T and South Carolina State. The number eight seed, Illinois, Lou Henson's 10th appearance in the last 12 years for the Fighting Illini will take on John Thompson's Hoyas, played their way in after snapping a 14 consecutive year appearance in the NCAA tournament last year. The UCLA Bruins are the fifth seed, sixth consecutive appearance, and they will play Tulsa. Tubby Smith, nice job manning that squad there. Oklahoma State, fourth seed, a team to watch led by the ever-improving Bryant Reeves will play New Mexico State, fifth consecutive time they're in the big dance. All right, so that is the field of 64. Let's take a look now. Of course, there are always some teams wishing they could be in the tournament. Here are some teams that we thought were on the bubble coming in. Folks, I don't think you can complain at all about the job done by the committee. We look at these squads here. Of course, their fans are a little upset. Villanova, a team of the future for sure, a young squad. But those are the bubble teams that did not make it into the field of 64. And when we come back to Kansas City, we'll have a conversation with the chair of the men's basketball committee, Tom Butters. But right now, we'll send you back to New York. The big three, Jim, Bill, and Billy. All right. Well, thank you, JB. We'll get back to you shortly. One more look at the number one seeds in the east. It's North Carolina. They're headed to Landover. And uh, it's Purdue in the southeast, probably securing that today, maybe taking it away from UConn. Missouri will go west. That's a surprise. And Arkansas to Oak City and could be routed through uh, Dallas, of course, is the regional for the Midwest. So there's your four number ones. The final four bracket shapes up this way. East meets southeast. April the 2nd, national semifinals. Midwest and the West are on the same side. But that means to me, a little surprise, Duke and Carolina are on the same side. I thought maybe in Charlotte they'd be on opposite ends, not able to meet until Monday night for the title if that worked out that way. But they're on the east, southeast. They could possibly play at the Final Four. Conference breakdown. Seven from the Big Ten as Wisconsin got in. And the Big East, a surprise to many. Seton Hall securing the sixth. And five from the ACC as Georgia Tech was left out. Now, just a moment ago, the reaction at the home of Massachusetts coach John Calipari as UMass found out their destination as the two seed in the Midwest. They'll be facing Southwest Texas State in a game on Thursday in Wichita. All right, Raft and Pack, we'll be back in just a moment. Tom Butters ahead. Also, one more look at the brackets. So get your, uh, your pencils and your brackets ready. We'll go through it one more time as we continue on the road to Charlotte.
right now back out to Kansas City. They've been working since Thursday. The committee there and Tom Butters, the chair, joins James Brown. JB. All right, Jimmy, thank you very much. And it's uh, clear that he's been saving this uh, sport coat combination until today, this evening, as a matter of fact, Tom. I'm much more dressed than I was uh, earlier occasions with you. Tom, let's talk about uh, the number one seeds or the one seeds, if you will. Purdue, clearly a Midwest team getting the one seed in the Southeast. Arkansas, a Southeast Conference team going to the Midwest. The rationale there? Well, anytime we have an opportunity to place teams in their area in their areas where their fans can have uh, the best chance of seeing them, we try to do that. It's kind of a misnomer when you think that uh, southeastern team being Arkansas, they would necessarily stay southeast. That's not true. We've tried to accommodate uh, Arkansas by putting them closer to home in Oklahoma City. We have not in any way uh, hurt Purdue by the opportunity of letting them go to Lexington. So we've really looked at it in trying to accommodate fans. Unfortunately, you've got a team of Missouri. Somebody had to go west, and uh, that simply comes down to ranking those number ones, and that was done, and, and uh, they were the team to go west. Connecticut, uh, one of the teams that certainly formed that pool of 1C candidates uh, hurt by the loss. Does that say that because North Carolina is the 1C that maybe more emphasis placed on the, uh, the conference, the ACC, versus the Big East? I don't think so. I think that both of them came in with the possibility of being a one. Um, Connecticut having lost early, Carolina going on winning the championship. Carolina obviously has had a great season, as has Connecticut. And I don't think it shows any disfavor, hopefully, to uh, Connecticut. What it does do is say that, that both of them had outstanding seasons. They're one and two seeds, and we obviously wish them well in the East. All right, I know the guys in New York are chomping at the bit as well. Let's get it back to Jim Nance. Jim? I think that's the way to phrase it. Uh, Tom, Jim Nance in New York first. Uh, as tumultuous a day as Saturday was in college basketball, what did that do to the committee and how much shuffling as a result of the upsets? Jim, I don't think I've ever experienced a day quite like yesterday. You, in many ways, it represented, I think, the entire season, so we probably shouldn't have been surprised. But we had done an awful lot of work prior to the outcome of those games, and then so many of them fell, and fell in a way that where they, there were upsets, that we simply had to go back to the drawing table last night. We worked quite late last evening trying to readjust and rethink our positions. And uh, so it was a late night, and then we got up very early this morning to begin again. Tom, I want to jump back into a league you're very familiar with, the ACC. Uh, they had one less team than the Big East, and the team that uh, jumps out at me right away is a Georgia Tech club that I realize has some real injury problems right now, but they had two wins over North Carolina, wins over people like Wake Forest, Virginia Temple, and Maryland. Uh, they had to be one of those clubs that on the bubble didn't quite make it, huh? Well, they were, and obviously, as you and I know, they're an outstanding ball club, and it's difficult anytime you leave any team out that is deserving of the kind of consideration that they received and not get in, then obviously you're, you're concerned about that. But they, although they had some wonderful wins, as we're both well aware of, uh, they simply didn't have enough of those kinds of wins, and especially against teams perhaps that they should have won. Tom, Bill Raftery, uh, did the UConn loss open it up for another Big East team? No, I don't think that's the case, Bill. I think what happened was that that there were obviously openings, uh, and we had to take a look at who was the best of the 34 teams at large in the country with which to fill those openings. And we did that, and we looked at it long and hard. There were a lot of teams that won. There were some 63 teams that won 20 games or more. I think only 45 of those are in the tournament. So we looked at all of those teams and a variety of others from smaller conferences or lesser conferences on the RPI and uh, gave careful consideration to it. But at the end of the day, we felt that Seton Hall was among the best 34 in the country. And in fact, uh, Tom, when you really look at the seedings, the at-large teams with the worst seedings are Tulsa, a 12, and College of Charleston, a 12. Is it fair to say they're the last two teams to get into the field? Jim, you know, I guess it would be fair to say that, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure that that's accurate. It, it, it can't be done quite that way. It is, uh, obviously, they weren't among the first to be put in, but there were several teams that were in that mix, teams that looked very much alike, at least from the committee's perspective. And I frankly can't tell you whether either of those teams were last or next to last, or, but they were in that grouping. 
Uh, Tom, the Midwestern Collegiate Conference with Xavier and, and, and Evansville got no one. I realize they were upset in their postseason tournament, but then you have the Trans-American that got two teams into the, uh, into the field of uh, 64. Seems like a little imbalance there. Well, no matter which way you go, Billy, uh, I, th I think you're going to have that kind of an argument. What we did was to take a look, for example, at the College of Charleston, the fact that they were 22-3, and three, the fact that they did play a couple of teams, three teams in the top 100, the fact that they did win those games, the fact that they beat Alabama by 22. It gave them an opportunity to be noticed and to be studied and to be compared against those teams like those you've mentioned, and again, we simply came out where we did. All right. Well, Tom Butters, uh, thank you for joining us. And James Brown, excellent job out there in Kansas City. All right, Jimmy. We'll look forward to getting the show underway on uh, Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern time here on CBS. But we're going to take one more look at the brackets and bring in the experts, the Raft and the Pac-Man coming up in just a moment. Stay with us. On eight brackets we're going to talk about. First off, Uniondale, New York in the east. Nebraska and Penn are there. Also, George Washington got into this field. UConn slipped to a two. Did that surprise you guys now that you've had a chance to look at it? Well, Billy, we talked about the postseason conference tournaments, and obviously I thought Connecticut was the number one seed. I still think they're going to be a good enough team to be a one seed. And Penn, the Ivies are back. Huh? 83, <laughs> Princeton, Les went to win in the tournament. Great backcourt. Fran Dunphy's done a great job with them. How about George Washington getting in? George Washington, the last, it kind of surprised me. They were so far down in between that Temple and Mass, but uh, the league got three teams, and they've got the power. They had some experience they were last hot year. Late. Yep. Very hot. The other first and second round site in the East is uh, Landover, Maryland. The number one team in the East is there, North Carolina. Eight, nine games, I've noticed, are very strong. In fact, three Big East teams are in eight, nine games. Here's Boston College, and Indiana and Temple possibly down the line in the second round. Jimmy, I think the real story in that region is Indiana. I mean, I, I, Bob Knight goes in with an incredible amount of controversy. That team is either going to explode in this tournament, or that team could have problems. And Temple Drexel, I mean, the city of brotherly love, <laughs> that's going to be a tough team brotherly in the tournament because nobody knows how to play against that uh, zone matchup defense. I think the East is very strong. Let's shift now over to the Southeast. Purdue uh, got the one seed, I believe, locked up today with that victory against Illinois, don't well, you? Well, they really have come on so strong of late. Glenn Robinson steps up today. We've talked about the comparison with Danny Manning and what he did with Kansas. Robinson certainly has that potential. And Providence, Alabama, great game, Billy, but how about Wake, the alma mater? That's not going to be <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not, we weren't knocking the College of Charleston. No. I mean, they've had, they've had a, a fine season and moving up to Division One so quickly. Mm -hmm. We're ineligible for the postseason tournament, and it's good to see them in there. But bottom line, are you surprised they got in ahead of St. George's? Yes, I am. Okay. I am. Or Xavier, even. Or Xavier, or Southwest, mm -hmm. another Southwest Conference team. Also in the Southeast, this is action in St. Petersburg, and uh, there you see Marquette's in that bracket, along with Kentucky, which means Kentucky, if it advances to the regional, will be playing in Knoxville, um, SEC side, of course. And Seton Hall. Raph, i got to come mm -hmm. to you. Now, what about Seton Hall getting in there? Uh, Judd Heathcote, huh? great job there, and, and I'm sure PJ's delighted. I thought they played very strong late. Outstanding defense, maybe his best coaching job ever with this group. Hey, I want to mention something, too, about that Kentucky club. Remember last year when they exploded in the SEC tournament mm -hmm. and the way they played throughout the regionals? So that's a team to look out for. And Duke Seton Hall, we've seen that uh, game in the tournament just a couple of years sure. ago. Down in Philly. Okay, let's move on now to the west and out west. We're going to begin in Ogden, and this is action on Thursday and Saturday. All right, before we go through all the teams, Missouri being in the West, that really surprised me. It really does, too, it's particularly when you talk about losing in their conference tournament. I realize they had a great run in the regular season, but, you know, there doesn't seem to be a parallel between certain conference tournaments seem to have an effect, and others didn't seem to have any meaning at all, and, and it's, of course, Missouri gets number one. Wisconsin got in there, Raph. Oh, Richard Griffith, the injury, really why they tailed off at the end of the year, but Stu Jackson kept saying, we don't deserve it. They're in, and hopefully he'll be healthy. Wisconsin, Green Bay, California. It's going to be interesting to see those two different styles of play go against each other. Also also in the West, this is action in Sacramento, and Sacramento has the site on Friday and Sunday. Arizona is the two in the West. Maybe they could have won the West yesterday, Billy, had they won that game. An incredible day in the Pac-10 when you figure the top three teams, all of which will be going this tournament, all lost yesterday. And Billy Denny Crum shooting the threes. Did you ever think it would happen last no, couple of years? He didn't like it when it first started, no. but he's taking advantage now. Experienced club, tough in the middle mm -hmm. as well. A lot of people like Louisville, Raph. What sure, do you think? Rozier played a great day today. I mean, as Billy mentioned, Morton, an outstanding performer, and in Embracing the threes, which has opened things and up. Two starting freshmen are no longer freshmen. Mm -hmm. He whispered.
heard to me that Minnesota surprised you a little bit being a six. Well, I think they moved, you know, the Big Ten going seven deep. I mean, somebody, that, that league was so tough this year and deserved those seven seeds. All right, gentlemen, over now to the Midwest. This is in uh, Wichita. Texas, the only team from the Southwest Conference to get in as A&M was left uh, out of it. And Michigan, with a couple of starters in there from the state of Texas, they could be looking ahead to Michigan-Texas round two. Well, obviously, we talked about Purdue's great run at the end of the season. Michigan, of course, tailed off. Those guys, uh, the Fab Four now, were trying to go ahead and win their first Big Ten title. Didn't go their way. And no Houston in there. Jimmy, a little bit upset yeah, at that. Yeah, you got to throw <laughs> it in St. There. Louis and Spoonball. Yeah. Gary Williams better be prepared. This is another team that shoots the threes how, and is confident. How about the great uh, the great Midwest? With, with uh, They had no you automatic bid. They ended up with four Marquette. teams in the tournament. How about UMass going to the Midwest instead of being in the East after it won the A-10 on Thursday night? Does it surprise well, you? I, I don't, it doesn't surprise me, but and, and I think they'll be happy to play anywhere. This is a terrific basketball team. When they play Temple and they were beat them three times is incredible. And the final bracket we're going to show you one more time is in Oklahoma City. And, uh, boy, the Razorback fans are getting ready for Oak City and then down the line to be in Reunion Arena in Dallas. Uh, Illinois you, and one. Georgetown. That's, yeah. a, that's a great 8-9 oh, game. It is, Jim. And I'll tell you, really, a tough situation. UCLA, which everybody talks about, you know, when are they going to mm -hmm. make their thrust? How about having to play in Oklahoma City against a Tulsa team that uh, has proven to be very tough there? And it's poor New Mexico State as well against Oklahoma State right there near home. Oklahoma State and Arkansas, if you look way ahead, uh, could be playing in Dallas, and that would be some, draw some frenzied Eddie season. Sutton, Eddie, Eddie Sutton would like to uh, show him that he has got a ball club. So there you have it. That's a, a look at the brackets one more time. And uh, after you've taken a look at them, Billy, Tell me, which one's the strongest region of the four, you think? Well, I, I, th I look at the number one region in the Midwest. I mean, and because of the way that they came at the end of the year, I still think Arkansas is a Final Four team. Massachusetts, Billy said, just a very strong team. I like Michigan's experience in Oklahoma State with Eddie Sutton. Tough. I guess it's where he wants to go, huh? He, Southeast, he wants, I think, would be the next strong. I like the East. <laughs> all right, so there, I guess I it's balanced. I'll tell you one thing we might all agree on. I think the West is the weakest. Three of I the agree. top four mm -hmm. seeds lost their last game. All right, guys, we're set now for Thursday. Thanks. Enjoyed it. And while the travel agents right now start scurrying to make reservations, we'll remind you to reserve Thursday and Friday to watch the first round here on CBS. Car coverage starts at noon Eastern time. Prime time starts at 8 Eastern. For Billy Packer and Bill Raftery, Jim Nance, we'll see you here Thursday. CBS Sports presentation of the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show has been sponsored by Pizza Hut, who reminds you that any time's a great time to stop and smell the pizza.